Welcome to Bar Beacon's Cloning Laboratories. Today is very exciting. We've got a chance to go and have a look at the scientists working with the three different techniques we use to clone animals. Now we get to see how this happens, how we generate these genetically identical animals and uh, all the processes that are involved. Okay, so if you're ready, let's uh, go inside, let's take a look around the laboratory, see what's going on. Welcome inside the laboratory. Uh, we're just going to take a look around and see what's going on, the different techniques that are used for cloning. The first one we're going to look at is an embryo transplantation. Now this one is really important. It's, it's good for farmers because they can look at prize uh, bulls or prize rams and they want to create clones of these animals. So what happens is uh, we take the sperm from the prize ram in this case and we, we will insert it into uh, the egg with artificial insemination. Basically, once artificial insemination has taken place, what we can do is we can take the embryo and we can split it and we can put it into four different sheep. What we end up with then is a clone of that prize ram that we started off with uh, in each of the sheep. And then that sheep will, be, uh, will give birth and we'll have four clones that are genetically identical, have all the characteristics and traits of that prize ram that we started with. Okay, so what I've got here, I've got two sheep. I'm going to do a uh, cloning technique right here and now for you. I'm going to do a, a nuclear transplantation. So what I need to do first is to remove an udder cell from the one sheep. And we'll put that into the Petri dish right here. And then secondly, I'm going to take a, an egg cell from our sheep here. Once we remove that, we can put that in the Petri dish. And uh, I'll show you what's going to happen next. We'll take that across and have a look underneath the microscope. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a look at our, our egg cell and our, our other cell that we've taken from the two sheep, sheep A and sheep B, and uh, we'll see at the next stage of the cloning process. So what we can see now is we've got the two Petri dishes, one containing the egg cell and one containing the other cell. What we need to do in nuclear transplantation is to remove the nucleus from the other cell and implant it into the empty egg cell where the nucleus has already been removed. This cell is then allowed to continue uh, to grow and we will give it some chemicals or an electric shock which will turn this cell into the very first cell of development. This cell will then start to replicate and it will grow into our embryo which we can implant into a sheep uh, which will be a surrogate sheep where the sheep can develop. Okay, Mr. Smith, it's alright, it's alright, just breathe, breathe, it's okay, it's okay. I can see the head, I can see the head. Here he comes. It's alright, I've got it, I've got it. Wow, identical twins. Now, this is nature's natural clones. These two twins would be genetically identical. If we took the DNA from these two twins, we'd find out that it would read exactly the same. So maybe we should have a go at doing that. Okay, we're back in the laboratory again. I've brought the two twins with me. What we're going to do is we're going to take a DNA sample from each twin. What I need to do is just take a simple swab from the inside of the mouth and we'll get some DNA. Okay, that's the one twin done. Now we've got some DNA we can look at. So, we're going to have a look at this a little bit closer now. So what we've just done, we've taken a DNA sample from our two twins and what we're going to do is look a little bit more closely at the DNA sequence. Uh, so if we look at twin A, what you can see is a, a load of letters and DNA is, is kind of like that, it's a lot of letters put together. But if we can separate these DNA into a readable sentence, into three letter words, we can see that it actually makes sense. So you can see the cat and dog all day. And that's twin A. Now twin B, we said is genetically identical. So if we take the DNA of twin B, we'd find that the sentence would read exactly the same. You can see the cat and dog all day. Okay, so that was a natural type of cloning. Uh, twins are a natural clone. But the problem we've got is with DNA, when we try and clone other than natural, when we actually do it synthetically, what is happening is there's some things that can go wrong. For example, we can now have a 
base pair substitution or deletion. And what can happen is our sentence that was able to be read before is now no longer able to be read. It makes no sense. And the same with twin B. We've seen a mutation occur in the DNA where one base pair has been removed and we've got a sentence that no longer makes sense. What happens as a result of this is that we have uh, either the baby born with a mutation, not born at all, uh, or we can end up with some genetic disease. A good way of example of this is if you had a species of human and you had cloned it, what would happen if you had six billion Jamie Olivers roaming around the world? Now no one wants that, do they? So the other problem is so we've got variation, we've got mutations. And what can happen with mutations is we can end up with uh, babies being born that have got mutations and we see them wandering around the earth today. So in summary, we've looked around the laboratory, we've looked at all the different techniques we've used for cloning. And we've looked at embryo transplantation. We've looked at taking uh, the sperm for a prized ram, artificially inseminating that into a sheep, developing the embryo, splitting it, and then placing it in different sheep and getting those clones of our prize ram. We've looked at the nuclear transfer, taking a, a, uh, an udder cell, taking an egg cell, transferring the nucleus from the udder cell into the egg cell and developing the embryo that way. And then we've only used one sheep. We've implanted it in artificially into the sheep so it can grow and develop into the sheep and a clone of that sheep. And the last type we've looked at, natural twins, identical twins, a natural way, nature's way of cloning human beings. And all the different problems that are associated with all these different techniques. Now we hope you've enjoyed your tour around Barbican's laboratories and that you've got a good insight into the techniques at the cutting edge of science when we look at clothing.